Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Shadi Reyes uh, from New York this time. Uh, this is EVS. I'm really privileged to be with Dr. Busra Kangat, who is originally from Turkey, but she's a resident of imaging right now at Mount Sinai. Dr. Kangat, thanks for being with us. Thank you, thanks a lot for so, the invitation. So uh, you presented a phenomenal case about aortic dissection. It's a unique presentation. Why you don't walk us through it? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, I want to start with like this meeting. It's my second time here, mm -hmm. and last year I also attended. And I think it's a fantastic meeting that brings uh, different perspectives together from like vascular surgery, cardiac surgery, cardiology and interventional radiology. Mm. So especially um, someone like me, it's a trainee, it's very educational. Yeah. Uh, yesterday there was also a cadaver lab that I had to like, I, I get a chance to practice uh, with other trainees. So it was really like fantastic. So yesterday um, in the aortic case competition, I uh, presented a case, a very young patient uh, presented with uh, chest and neck pain. Uh, postpartum uh, four days after her uh, elective c-section mm. and, and it, it was um, CTA showed it was an ascending there was a flap in the ascending aorta it was a type a aortic dissection so I, I just want to mention that it's an important like um, so almost 50% of aortic dissections especially in young women as associated with, with pregnancy so as we all know uh, pregnancy uh, changed the uh, uh, because of estrogen effect it changed the vascular bed structures yeah. uh, increases st stroke vol volume uh, heart rate yeah. uh, so it has a uh, obviously causing a stress yeah. on the aortic wall uh, so clinicians should be really um, cautious and have low lower threshold yeah. for someone who is pregnant or even postpartum up to 12 weeks they should be. Uh, they should have really have a low uh, threshold to of, uh, order a diagnostic test to check for it, to yeah. check if they have any symptoms. So, is there a risk factor like uh, preeclampsia or eclampsia can put uh, a woman more at risk for uh, dissection? Yeah, definitely. Uh, as, as you said, the hypertension during pregnancy definitely is a risk factor. Also, um, we we saw that in the connective, if the patient has a connective tissue disease, obviously uh, it puts them a higher risk. Yeah. But uh, interestingly, our patient they didn't have a, any history of hypertension during pregnancy, so pregnancy was no yeah. issue and um, didn't have any family history, didn't have any connective tissue disease. So, so it the, can uh, happen to... No. Uh, this is new uh, to me too. I mean, I don't know, like you said, 50% of women with postpartum can be, uh, with this presentation, can correct. be Correct, yeah, yeah. So under 40 year old, uh, young woman yeah. and it's associated with pregnancy. Yeah. So. As you said, connective tissue and others, but this is kind of sometimes, this lady doesn't have anything, just first baby, boom. Yeah, 27 dissection. year old and wow. she didn't have any, wow. any predisposing. And how, how did you repair her? Sorry? How did you repair her? Or is it vascular? Oh, endo, uh, yeah, or? that's an another another point. So th since these patients are young, so their aortic valves are completely leaflets, completely healthy. Yeah. So that's why right now, um, valve sparing root replacement, re root replacement is something really like commonly used yeah. in this patient population. Yeah. Obviously, in the um, experienced cardiac surgeons in the hard high volume centers. So um, this was Dr. El Hamamzi from Mount Sinai, so uh, he's obviously very experienced in aortic surgery, so uh, he did a, um, a valve, uh, valve sparing root replacement. It's also called the Yakub procedure. Mm. Um, so there are two types, one David procedure, the other one is the Yakub procedure. They are the most common two types of valve sparing root replacement. So in this case, um, he uh, performed the Yakub procedure. Nice. So the patient doesn't, like, because in the, in the surgery, we were able to see the leaflets are completely healthy, so there was no need to change the, the, the valve, valve itself. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there was no bicuspid valve, there's nothing, no, the valve nothing. was yeah, oh, Interesting. And how is she doing now? She is charged? Yeah, okay. she's, she's doing completely fine in the follow-up visit in the clinic. She, she didn't have any complaint, uh, walking regularly. Yeah. Yeah, in these uh, cases, would you recommend like screening family for orthopathy or signs such as a thing? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So we actually um, re uh, recommended a genetic consultation. Yes. So right now we are waiting for the results. It hasn't been resulted yet. So according to that results, obviously we will, uh, as you said, recommend yeah. the family screening, family screening too, if there is anything, any so abnormality. So you start with genetics testing. If there's yes. any alert, any uh, uh, phenotypes, then you will screen the family. Correct. Mm -hmm. Just well, interesting case, Busra. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. You're welcome. Thank uh, watch you the videos you. and others on, with, uh, on YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from e in New York, EBS.
Thank you for watching. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.